Good morning. Today I'm going to do a video that will help anyone that's just setting up or whether you've been going for a while and you've just been posting pictures of your finished items on Facebook but you're thinking that you really need to step up your game. Um, maybe you want to do uh, open your own website or your Etsy store, whatever. Having a standard image display that stands out as your item in all the searches that pop up will do your store and your brand awareness wonders. My Etsy, I've gone through various design file, uh, dif design types. This last year, I settled on everything looking the same, whether it's in the bargain section or the sublimation design, where, wherever it is. It all looks the same with the same, you know, bottoms, um, the same kind of logo at the top. They've all got the same background, regardless of where it is. So when you do go into searches and you pop up, see some of the old stuff still here that I need to get my ass into gear and change. But this year, um, I've redesigned it for this year and this is what I'm going to go with. Something that's simple at the bottom, people can see what programs this is going to work with. I'm using Zara Designer, um, which is a layered system, so I can turn off, if this is just a sublimation design, I can turn off the vinyl cutting icons to let people know that you need a heat press, uh, you need to have your printer, you can earn money from my designs and they come with product mockups. And again, there's an indication here as to what kind of file it is. So you won't really want to be able to be cutting this with all the um, artifacts in it. So it's a sublimation design. And I work within this system. It's layered. And I can turn things on and off. I know not everybody uses designer the Zara designer but you can get the same effect with the layers that will help you work better by using something simple like silhouette studio doesn't matter whether you use um cricket you know cricket design space for your vinyl cutter you don't have to have a silhouette cameo or portrait or anything it's a free download and if you do if you really struggle with something to do your designs in go and download this it's silhouetteamerica.com head over to the software department you can make a free account you don't need to have an account but treat this as your as an extra design program if you like i've used cricut design space while they had issues coming out of beta 3 and it did have a um what was it called the air 2 or something um, I got rid of it in a fit of rage after their issues with the connection. Lost me about 70 quid's worth of HTV, which is way more expensive than standard vinyl. So I kind of fell out with them. That's why you probably don't see so much interaction with me with Cricut. Um, I'll change that because you can use the software offline now, so I think it's only fair to give it a try. I do make products that work with... You know, my SVGs work with Silhouette, Cricut and the Scanner Cut from Brother. So I make sure that everything's compatible. But for me, the best program for vinyl cutting is the Silhouette Studio. Um, I'm running the business edition, but you don't need the business edition to do what we're going to do today. So first things first, I'm working on my designs on an A4 sheet. It's, it's A4. Um, it's easy to work with and it fits it fits in the the Etsy format very nice even on my uh, website which needs a bit of love this year uh, these are the old designs it fits in nicely as you can see it's just the same file that I've had before um, but it needs to be 
brought up. I think I've just put one of the new ones on, yeah. So, you know, it works well. Standard format. I don't have to redesign it, resize it for Etsy and then resize it for my website. So I work with A4. So what we need to do first is we need to add in the elements that's going to be the same on every page. So for that, we're just going to bring in a wooden shelf. I'm just using, I've got two monitors, so I'm just using the screen at the side just to drag items in for, for easy use. So this page, this image is 50 centimeters. So we don't want it to be 50 centimeters. We'll just make it 15 for now. And I know from past experience that it stuffs it right down here. So we'll just zoom back in. I'll include a couple of these frames um, in the in the group's files if people want to have a mess about with them or use them, don't matter. Um, so we'll just resize this to fit. So we've got that in, it's a bit battered and scruffy, but I've seen worse on some people's um, product listings where they've took a photograph in the kitchen. Uh, it's got crumbs and dinner dishes and all sorts in the background. But that's life, you know. It's rustic. <laughs> so we've got this background. Um, and the, the next thing that we need to click on, and something that probably many of you have never been near or only think is applicable in things like Photoshop and oh, way too technical for you and you know you tackle yourself this year and push you know push yourself to the limits and get yourself into that you know out, out of your comfort zone should I say um, and we're going to use the layer panel so as you can see at the minute we've got two layers um, and in this layer we've got this background if we turn off this layer, there's nothing there. This layer is the same layer because it's all one layer. So if we rename that layer to be wood, that's our layer. So in order for this not to move, we're gonna click it so that it locks it. So we can't move it, can't do anything to it. <coughs> The next thing that's important when you're making your own products, mock-ups and display mock-ups is to start creating some brand awareness. You know, you're not just a photograph of a mug on a fancy background. You're not just a photograph of a, a you know, a model in a t-shirt with your design on. You've got a logo, use it, make people aware of it so that when you know you're in Etsy and you know searches pop up your stuff will be apparent and if anyone shopped with you before they will get to know your layout hopefully anybody that shopped with you will subscribe and follow you so that they get you know new designs popping up in their inboxes but not everybody does um, they just like to search and search the field and see what they can what they can find that's cheap. So we need to bring in a logo. So my logo that I use on everything is just my head that got vectorized. Um, so what I've done here is I've brought it into the layer that I've just locked. Uh, I can't do anything with it; it's stuck. So that's what we don't do. So what we need to do is we need to create another layer now and we'll call this layer logos because that's what we're going to do so with that layer selected we bring in the logo and as you can see now I can resize this to do what I like now it's up to you everybody's logo is different you know somebody some people might have a great big um, you know arched logo with the design underneath not everybody's got a, you know a compact 
I designed mine to be compact so I could hide it out the way. <coughs> but it's up to you. Whatever you, if you want a nice broad um, arch logo across the top. If you don't have a logo, you can create it in here. You know, you can just create your logo. Um, I'll do another video on how to create arch text and things like that if you don't know. But yeah, so we'll stick our logo there. And I indicate on my designs what they're for. You know, whether it's a 3D printing file or a mixed uh, multi-use file or just an SVG I indicate so that people can see because some people don't read some people automatically think that just because you're selling an image they can use it in whatever program that they want I mean anybody you know thinking that they're going to be able to cut that on a a vinyl cutter is beyond me but believe me I've had that happen people say I can't cut this at all it's you know it's ridiculous but they don't read they don't read the file so you need to make sure that people know what it is you're selling so if we just put a basic um, sublimation um, design and we will choose some random text I'm just going to go with anything, not in anything in particular. Let's go something a bit. There we go. We'll go up to the colours and we'll choose. That should look nice on the wood. We'll go to the line colour, get rid of it. Because we're not cutting, we're just designing. In fact, we'll stick this up here. I know. In fact, I think we'll make that. We'll make it white. There, that'll look nice on the wood. Make it a bit smaller. We'll stick it in the middle here. All right. So we've got our logo. Oops, I've got rid of the layers. We've got our text panel. We've got our logo. So we'll leave them alone. We'll lock all them down so the next one we need to do is we need to add another layer and we'll call this layer mockups right so while we've got mockups selected we'll go and I will find cushions another thing with silhouette studio is you don't have to always go on file and import or file file and import will just open another tab and you'll have several tabs full of all sorts and you've got to copy it from that tab and bring it into this tab or you can go file and merge if you want but you can also just drag and drop i don't know why these things don't they don't tell you these things i've got no idea um i struggle with some programs why they're not a bit more user friendly uh, I did have three of these cushions. Let's have a look. Oh, there we go. Right. So we've got these three cushions. So we need to just make them a little bit bigger. There we go. If we wanted to make sure that they're all the same size, click on the one that we like, and we can see that it's 16.86 wide. So if we click on that one and click on 16.86, that will make it the same size and this one 1686 it will automatically resize it if this padlock is locked because it it, it um, enlarges it together you know it enlarges both sides together um, so we need to bring these to the front because at the minute they're all behind each other the wrong way and we don't want them to be that way so we can either send this one to the back which is sent to the back that one we can bring this one forward let's keep clicking on it we 
What's going on? Oh, my fault. I brought them into different layers. Right, so I want them all together. So we just drag and drop them up so they're all in the same layer. There we go. That's my fault. I'm going to bring this one to the front. There we go. All I've done there is drag these well on top of each other like that if we wanted these to be bigger which I think we could afford to get them a bit bigger is we don't want this panel open we could make them 18 maybe 20 we'll do 20 and that one 20 and this one in the middle 20 there we go If you wanted to put something else on the top, you could do, if you wanted to, um, where's our logos? All right, we're going to the logo panel. We can unlock this logo panel so that we can move this text. We can move it up here and change the color if you don't want to add any more, any more, um, text to it you know if that's all you want to do then that's it so if we lock all these panels down right so nothing can be, can be moved when you want to change your products if you only ever did mugs or if you only do cushions you can then just drag and drop another cushion on top of that so if I bring another cushion in, move it across, whichever layer I'm touching, it will automatically change without you having to unlock or move anything so that your layouts are in the same place every single time. See? everything's in the same place every single time and that is i think the presentation sells your design if it looks good on the screen people will be able to imagine what that looks like in their shop see these cushions it's the same pattern these uh, thingy bags although they look different they're not they're the same it's just the color makes it look wider these cushions are in the same place these are in the same place and that's what you want you want to be able to create that so regardless of what design you're bringing in you can create something that's in the same place without nudging it because everything's locked you've locked everything down in your layer panel <clears throat> so silhouette studio it's free and it's more than just for vinyl cutting now to get this picture off here if you don't have business edition which you won't if you're going to download the free version um, you can save that as a studio 3 file you will not be able to save it as a png so what you need to do is make this screen as big as possible not that big if you've got windows software 
you will have built in to Windows 10 um, a program called it used to be called Snippet, but it's now it's now called Snip and Sketch. If you can't find it, just type in Snip and Sketch. Snip and Sketch. It's the first thing that opens. It tells you it's an app. Just click it. That's the logo. It's like a mountains with a a, a, a circle thing to, around it. When you open it, all this does, all this is a screen grabber, so you can go and select the area select that and then you can save it there you go look you open in the other window um, you can save that then as whatever whatever design that you like really and that's your image that you could use in your Etsy or your website even on Facebook and that's it any comments, you know, please feel free to, to add under the video.